Are you a fellow golf simulator user looking for a projector that packs a massive punch in a decent price point? We're talking about a laser projector at a good quality and at a fair price. Well, we may have just a video for you and that's coming up right now. All right, thanks again for watching and welcome back. My name is Roland here at Garage Golf where we provide extraordinary golf info for the extra ordinary golfer. If you're new to our channel, Make sure to subscribe so you can be notified of new videos being released like the one that you're watching here today. And here at Garage Golf, we provide information on golf simulators, golf products, golf technology, and pretty much anything golf related. So if you're new to our channel, again, make sure to subscribe. Interested in building a golf simulator of your own? Reach out to me anytime at Roland at MyGarageGolf.com. That's what I do here. I help people free of charge. Our services are completely free of charge for us to help you build your own golf simulator at home. You can reach out to me anytime, Roland at MyGarageGolf.com. I look forward to helping you with all your golf simulator needs. All right, so jumping back into the video now, what we have in our hands here that we're about to unbox for you is the BenQ LH820ST. It's a laser projector. It's packed with a bunch of features. I wanna get this thing out of the box. We won't do a full video unboxing. I'm just gonna show it to you out of the box. We're gonna go ahead and jump right into the details of the projector so I can give you all the info that you're looking for at home. So now we have this beautiful projector unbox. I'm gonna bring you around, show you some of the ports, some of the features of the BenQ LH820ST. So let's take a look at this beautiful BenQ projector here. And again, it is a laser projector. It's a 1080p projector. And on the front, we have a focus knob here. Here you see the focus knob that you can adjust. It does not have a zoom knob. Again, it is a laser projector. We have the controls here that you can control it does come with a remote as well, obviously. Let's take a look at the side. So we have one side here. I'll show you the back here in just a minute. Got the other side here. This is where it vents and everything, obviously. And then on the back, let's look at the ports here. So there's the ports. Looks like we have a monitor out port, a LAN port, a mini B port. We have a PC port, two of those it looks like video, S video port, looks like HDMI. We have one HDMI on this, audio in and audio right and left there that we see, as well as a type A USB. So we got one HDMI input on this one. Let's take a look and see if there's anything else we need to show you. Got the port here for the actual plug as well. And lastly here we see what's called a QCAST port. You can see how it has a little knob there you can basically open it little latch there and i believe what this is for is to be able to mirror devices so benq does sell what's called a qcast on their website that you probably use this port for to plug it into and that essentially will allow you to mirror your devices directly to the projector without an hdmi cord so we'll check on functionality of that to see if it's available at launch or not but definitely a really cool feature that they've added to some of the newer projectors all right, so some pretty neat ports on the BenQ LH820ST. Now let's talk about some of the features that really make it stand out. Number one, it is a laser projector with up to 20,000 hours, so it's going to last. Cool thing about laser projectors is you can run them literally all day. If you wanted to run something like this even in a commercial facility, you could run them, it won't overheat, and that's really, really good quality and something that's going to stand the test of time, which is most important. Another really important feature is the exclusive golf mode that is native to this 820ST projector. Golf mode is a really, really cool feature where the greens are greener and the blues are bluer. So when you're using it with a golf simulator, and again, keep in mind, this can also be used with a home theater really, really easily. But when you're using this with a golf simulator, it's actually going to make it pop just a little bit more. It's a really, really cool feature. So when I set up the actual projector, I'm going to have it set up here because I have a couple already set up here in my facility, but I'm going to show you how easy it is to install this and basically set it up here in a setup like what I have behind me. Or if I need to, maybe even go into a smaller screen setup as well. So we're going to show you a little bit of everything here, and we're also going to test a couple of different courses out to show you the golf mode and to show you how those colors look on the BenQ projector that we have here in front of me. So here in a few minutes, I'm going to actually install this and show you all the menu features, but a couple other features I really want to point out to you. Number one, and I think this is a vital feature, if you're looking to look for a projector for your golf simulator needs, first of all, make sure you reach out to me directly because I'll help you free of charge and line up the right product for you. 
But secondly, you want to look for something called corner technology or four corner correction. And what that does is allows you to blow out your image a little bit larger than your screen. Basically, then you can go back and shrink down each corner, right corner, left corner, up and down, and adjust those to fit your screen within your enclosure to make it work. So that is a really, really cool feature. Another feature that this projector has is 2D keystoning, so I'm gonna show that to you as well. Now if it's flat, you don't really get keystoning, and what keystoning is is an image that's gonna be a little bit taller uh, or wider on the top or shorter on the top than the bottom. So it kind of morphs the image, and the keystoning will actually correct that. You get that often when you tilt your projector, so if you have a lot of height and you have to tilt your projector down, you'll get some keystoning issues. The, another thing to kind of factor in with that is to get an extension pole to drop down your projector without having to tilt it as much. But sometimes you still have to deal with keystoning and it's nice that it has the 2D keystoning feature which I can show you guys how to access that as well. So lots of cool stuff. I wanna kind of get into that, show you everything that we're basically talking about. We have the golf mode, we have the 2D keystoning and one other feature that's really, really cool is we also have a digital shift version. So in other words, you can digitally shift your image right or left using this projector. I've not seen the digital version of that before, so I'm looking forward to testing that out. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna try to set this up here, either here or in my other bay, we're gonna see which one works the best. When I bring you back, we'll have it set up, we'll have it plugged in, and I'll go through the menu system with you, and then we'll actually play some golf and check it out to see what it looks like when we're using that simulator with a program say, such as GS Pro, which is a really, really awesome program, and we can kind of show you a little bit more of how that image will look for you at home. All right guys, so it's been a few days and I went ahead and switched this over to our smaller setup just to make it a little easier to manipulate that image for you guys at home and to kind of show you what I was able to do. And part of the reason why it took me a couple of days is I wanted to get myself a stand for the actual projector. So this is a projector mount. It allows me to kind of tilt it up or down and make it a little bit easier for myself. Uh, I would normally mount it on the ceiling, but I have two projectors already, one right above me here and one on my other setup uh, that you've seen previously in the video. So. I wanted to make sure that I had a, a really fair opportunity and this would be a great kind of idea for people that need more of a portable setup. Um, let's say you're a righty or a lefty and you wanna have something that you can still have a projector but if you need to park your car in a garage or something like that, we have a really cool setup for something like that here. So we got a table set up, you see the screen behind me, I've been able to kind of manipulate the image. And again, this is the BenQ LH820ST. It is a laser projector, MSRP on this projector is gonna be around $18.99. Um, again, as a laser projector, it's good quality. It does do 16.9, 16.10, and 4.3 ratio. What you see behind me, because I have a 10 foot wide screen, is the 4.3 ratio. So let me bring you around and I'll show you on my camera how I've set this up on the actual projector stand. And then I wanna walk you through some of the settings that I set up. And then lastly here, we're gonna actually show you a couple holes playing on the golf simulator give you an idea at home of what you can expect with the BenQ LH820ST. All right, so I'm here in my setup, and again, excuse the wires and everything, this is just a quick portable setup to kind of show you guys everything. And again, all I really have plugged in right now is the power, and then I have the HDMI right there that we see. This little projector stand, I got this on Amazon. I will put a link for it in the video description. It does come with two straps, so you can basically tilt the projector, and as you see here, it's actually tilted, and it's kind of adjusted to the left part of the screen a little bit. Now this projector does also have uh, a really cool feature which is a digital lens shift. So it allows you to shift the image uh, from the right part to the left part of the screen as we would need in something like this. Because here's my projector again, all the way on the right side of my setup. But here you're seeing the image right in the middle. So I've kind of obviously went ahead and went through the settings. I'll walk you through that quickly. Uh, but it's gonna be unique for everyone's setup of course. And I do have this again in 4.3 resolution or 4.3 ratio. So let me take you to the computer. Uh, I'll kind of show you what I did there also. And then I'll show you on the actual menu settings what I did for the, for the actual settings on this projector as well. All right, so here you see my three displays. Again, I have two projectors set up to my computer right now. Um, the actual BenQ is number two here. So I'm gonna go into settings. And what we'll wanna do is we can actually click on that and again, Whatever setting you want to set up for your, um, your ratio, 4-3, whatever it may be, you could also go in here and set up your actual display resolution, and it's going to recommend to you what it is, essentially. So in mine, it recommended 1440 by 1080 for my graphics card to match up with the image. And when I was able to do that, I, I did have a difficult time kind of getting this initially set up, 
But once I was able to kind of change that resolution, it allowed me to obviously manipulate the image. And as you see there, it fits the screen quite well. So I did have to shrink it down. It does have four corner correction as well. So I'm gonna walk you through that a little bit and let's give you an idea on exactly how I have this set up here in regards to the actual menu settings on the projector itself. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna kick the lights all the way off so you can see the image in a darker setting. Obviously, a lot of times with the lights on, you're gonna get a washed out image so you won't see me on camera, but I'm actually gonna pull up the menu system and walk you through the menu system in more detail, letting you know some of the things that I'm able to do with this projector to basically get it set up for the size of my screen, get me a nice portable setup. In this situation, again, you could always mount this to your ceiling, have a full-time setup, set it once and forget about it. Uh, but in my case, it's gonna be more of a portable solution here in this particular setup. And then basically, we'll get started and kind of show you some gameplay and, and show you this projector in a little bit more detail also. All right, so here we are in the dark now. Obviously, you can see the actual image quality a lot better as far as how clean it looks. Uh, again, as a laser projector, this is 3,600 lumens altogether as a laser projector. Um, so good quality, it does look bright, even in, with actual light as well in the setup, like when we originally had it. You can see it nice and clear, maybe it doesn't display so well on camera, but in actual person, it looks really good. The colors are great on it as well, so it has a really good color. Um, high flexibility as far as how you're gonna be able to kind of set this up. It has the digital lens shift with the 2D keystoning. Again, corner correction. I'm gonna show you some of that stuff right now as we go into the menu. Uh, but basically, just kind of want to give you an idea. Also, there are different presentation modes. One of them is a golf mode, so I'm going to show you that as well. So let's go ahead and go into the menu. And let me kind of give you an idea as to what I was able to do here with the, with the actual projector in regards to my setup. So under display, you see all the different features. And one of the features is 2D keystoning. So I do have my image keystone, as you see down at the bottom, 15 and 6. So there was a very kind of severe slant on one side or the other that I was able to adjust. I'm not gonna change it now, just because I'm afraid it's gonna change or change any settings, but I just wanna show you kind of how I set mine up. So I was able to get that more square, obviously, and work my way from there. Corner fitting as well. If I show you corner fitting, you'll see like on the upper left-hand corner, it's 16 down and two across. I can adjust that as you see here with the remote. You see that upper left-hand corner moving in. So I was able to manipulate all the corners and you can go up or down too as you need to so i had mine at 16 and 2 just to kind of make it square you can do that for each corner obviously that's that's something that's a really cool feature on any projector which is nice um, i didn't mess with too much else i did go to screen fill here and i changed it to 4-3 ratio that was really important for my setup this is a perfect setup for 4-3 i have a 10 foot wide screen uh, by about eight feet tall uh, as far as my image so really good setup for that Digital lens shift, uh, again, I'm not gonna go into that because I did touch it a couple times and it kind of messed up my image. But if I were to select digital lens shift, I'm able to actually move the image right or left um, as a whole. And a lot of times you'll see an optical lens shift that's on the actual device itself. But in this case, it's a digital version in which you can use your remote to move it right or left instead of adjusting it at the lens. So pretty cool feature. That's, that's obviously one that is unique, uh, kind of a newer thing that they're doing. And again, on mine, because I do have it on a table, I have it set under front table here in regards to my setup. And that was pretty much it as far as my total setup. So uh, again, it's at 1440 by 1080. That was what's kind of was native to it in regards to my computer. Um, and everything else, you know, was relatively simple. Once I got it, uh, this projector stand to kind of get it set up right. Uh, and there is different features. I didn't really mess with anything else. If I go into picture display, there is, right now it's in what you would call presentation mode. I'm gonna show you kind of all of them and see what your thoughts are. This is one that I think obviously looks nice because it's bright and shows it up really nice. If I were to change that, this is the golf mode. So I want you to look at how the green colors change. And uh, I do apologize, I am pretty much colorblind. So greens and reds and things of different shades. I don't see as much, um, but you guys on camera can probably see this. So check out the green and I'm gonna change it to golf. And you're gonna see how the colors adjust in regards to the green. Greens are supposed to be greener and blues are supposed to be bluer on the golf mode. It looks a little darker to me overall, especially if you look at like the sky, you see a little bit more clouds in the sky between the two. But other than that, um, you know, definitely a cool feature. And I'm gonna show you that on actual gameplay setting as well. And the other is video, all these are a little bit darker. You can adjust your own user one, user two, and kind of play with it yourself. Uh, as well to kind of get it the image where you want it to be. I, I've never done that because again, colorblindness, I'm not gonna really have 
too much say with how I want it to look. Um, so to me, I'm gonna test between presentation mode and I'm gonna do this on the golf simulator as well. Between presentation mode that you see here and the golf mode. I think those are gonna be two of the coolest features that we can check out. So let's go ahead and jump right into some gameplay and I will show you um, some gameplay here on this actual setup. I don't have GS Pro on this setup, so I'm gonna show you E6 Connect on this one, uh, which is obviously still gonna be really good graphics as well. But I wanna show that to you a little bit more in detail, show you some of the graphics and um, give you a better idea on what we're looking at here. All right, so we're gonna get started and we're gonna play a couple holes of golf here. And what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna play two holes on two different golf courses. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna switch it between presentation mode, which you see behind me, and golf mode. So we can check that out. I'm also gonna dim the lights in between and do a flyover so you can see a really crystal clear view of what this projector looks like. Again, you're gonna get some washout from the screen and the lighting. Um, it doesn't look the same on camera that it looks in person, but I'm gonna do the best that I can for you guys. So we're gonna start, one of the first courses we're gonna play is Wade Hampton Golf Course. We're gonna play the first two holes and then we're gonna pick one other course, do the same thing, but I'm gonna show you it in each mode so you can check it out. So I'm gonna turn the lights off really quick. We'll do a quick flyover for you and then we'll play the two holes, switch the presentation to golf mode on the second hole and show you at home what it looks like. All right, so let's start with a flyover of this hole here. And E6 Connect, it does have really good graphic settings as well. So you're gonna get a good idea for colors and different things on it. Again, remember this is presentation mode. So we're gonna try it out in presentation mode and then I'm also gonna show you golf mode as well just so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so for the video, I'm gonna keep this as dark as possible. So I want you guys to be able to see the projector as much as I can. My face may be kind of dark for you to be able to see. That's okay, you need to really see the screen more than my face, obviously. So let's leave it as dark as we can. Let me know what you think of the presentation mode. We're gonna play this first, par five. We'll see how we do. Don't worry about my horrible shots, but uh, we're really checking out this projector more than anything, okay? Let's get started. And for the purposes of this video, I will be using the SkyTrack Plus. If you have any questions on the SkyTrack Plus, which is a pretty phenomenal launch monitor for right around a $3,000 price point, make sure to reach out to me anytime at rollinandmygaragegolf.com. It's gonna be a little left. When I say a little left, I mean a lot left, right into the rocks. Oh, check out that bounce. Just like I drew it up. What do you guys think of the picture so far? All right, we got 349, let's go with the hybrid. Felt good. Well, can I get down that hill again? Oh, today must be my lucky day. Look at that, 211. All right, I got 140 for the next shot. All right, 140, let's try to hit a soft seven over there. Seemed okay. A little left. And a whole lot of far. And around. Whole lot of left on this one. Let's go with a 54 degree. We'll have a putt coming up. All right, so super excited. I get to use my brand new putter now that I just got in. We're looking at the Odyssey Jailbird putter with the extra long grip, Ricky Fowler edition. So I'm looking forward to testing it out. Let's see if it helps. We got an eight foot putt. Barely. All right, so I'm gonna stand here to the side and we're gonna swap out the mode now, the presentation mode. So let's check it out. All right, so here we have presentation mode now for the pitcher mode actually. And let's go ahead and swap that out to golf mode. And I wanna know what you guys think, honestly, because I don't, necessarily think it looks better per se it's if anything to me it looks a little darker but i'd love your opinion back on camera let's do a flyover i'm going to shut off any light there and let's do a flyover and see what you think at home 
All right, so here we go. Again, this is golf mode now. So, I mean, I do see the green, obviously, I think is, is different. The background looks a little darker to me, like the skies. But uh, it looks good, obviously. I, I just don't know, because, again, it's hard for me to kind of decipher this stuff. So I'd like your opinion at home what you think in regards to the color and which one you like more between golf and presentation under the pitcher mode. All right, so I got super lucky on about three shots um, there, even four shots probably with that putt to get a par on that first hole. So we're playing a par four, 405 yards now. This is hole number two. Let's see how we do. And again, this is gonna be on golf mode, under the pitcher mode. Should be decent. Drawing off of the, yep. Well, darn it, do not go down there. All right. So we got lucky again there. Only 215 for total distance. 192 away, let's try to get there with a five iron. Absolutely not happening. Everything's left. We got 43 yards, we got 54 degree. Come on, get on there, way on there, all right. So, so far, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think of the golf pitcher mode versus the presentation mode. It's jailbreak time again. And within gimme range, I forgot what I set it at, five feet? Yeah, there we go. All right, so we're two holes down and we're one above par. That sounds about right. Let's see what you guys think. We're gonna switch it up, pick another golf course. We're gonna try it one more time in presentation mode and in golf mode to see what you think at home. Okay, so we're now on Cabo del Sol. It's a course in Mexico. We're gonna play the first two holes. Again, we're gonna start off with presentation mode, which you see behind me here on the screen. This is gonna be presentation mode. And then we're gonna switch it back to golf mode on hole number two. So. Let me know your thoughts. Obviously, you just saw the golf mode. Here's presentation mode. Let me know what you think on the difference between the two. This is gonna be a 407 yard par four. Sorry, not for the driver. Decent shot for once, but of course, right towards the bunkers. Don't go in there. And you went in there. 216.9. All right, so we got 190 yards away. We'll be using a five iron, see if we can get down there. Probably not close, we'll be in the bunker. Five iron's the longest iron I have. So we're just gonna hit as hard as we can. Not very good. We're down there. All right, 51 yards away, we'll be using a 54 degree. And just so you guys know at home, what you're seeing me hit into here is actually the SIG-10 golf simulator package from Shop Indoor Golf. So if you have an idea as far as what you're looking for, this is actually a 10 foot wide enclosure, just so you're aware, uh, which works perfect with that 4-3 ratio that we talked about. So if you have any questions on any of the SIG products, Shop Indoor Golf products, please let me know. Too far. Man, that flew far. All right. All right, so we're 88 feet away. We're using the same club. Get up there. Still got some work to do. 16 feet away. We're going with our putter, obviously, here. Um, and again, for those of you who don't know, E6 Connect has some cool features. You can either align the brake, where all you gotta do is kind of hit the actual speed, which is where I have it set as, or you can adjust the brake yourself. For the speed of play, I like to have it align the brake for me, and then I just gotta kind of work on my speed a little bit. So, let's see how we do with this putt. Mm. 
Little short. All right, another bogey, I believe. All right, one more time. We're gonna switch it from presentation to golf mode. I wanna switch it back and forth a few times so you can see what it looks like. All right, so here's presentation mode. There's golf mode. So without looking at the box in the middle, check the colors out on the side. There's presentation. There's golf. So I'm seeing, to me, again, color blindness here. I'm seeing a little bit less blue, like in the sky, is what I'm seeing. Um, grass is probably a little greener, obviously, on the golf mode. A little less uh, definition, I think, on the golf mode with the grass as well. That's golf. That's presentation. And then let's take off the menu screen. So there's the golf mode. So it almost looks more gray, you know, to me as far. Obviously, the, the sky is not as blue for sure. Um, let me know what you think again at home. Okay, 487, par 5, starting with the driver. Not hitting that well at all. Two ten. Two ninety seven away. Let's go with a hybrid. <laughs> well, it was a good shot though, but I'm in the other bunker. Two ten. Same thing as my driver. 89 yards with 21 feet uphill. Let's see if we can get there with our 50 degree. Be all over it. Come on. Nice. All right, we're putting. 22 feet. Hopefully this will be our last shot of the day here. Let's knock it in. Little short. All right, so we're plus two. All right, so we play four holes now with the BenQ LH820ST, two of which were on presentation and two of which were on golf mode. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on which one you thought looked better at home. All right, so that about sums it up here today for our review on the BenQ LH820ST. And I'm curious to know what your thoughts are at home. What do you think about some of the features such as the four corner correction, digital lens shift, and some of the other things that you can do? And again, the fact that this is a laser projector right above the $1,800 price point MSRP. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, as far as my personal thoughts, I have had projectors that are easier to set up initially, but I've never really tested it from a tabletop like what you're seeing here. So that could just be a unique experience for me that I kind of had to adjust. It only does have 2D keystoning. Some other projectors do have 3D keystoning. So that might be something I would like to see. Plus it doesn't have a zoom lens, uh, which a lot of other projectors may have in that price point. So little pros and cons here and there. As far as the pros, as a great picture, once you get it set up, you really won't have to ever adjust it again for the most part. So while it may take you a little bit longer to set up this projector, I think overall in the end, you're gonna be pretty happy with the actual projector itself. <laughs> It does only have 3,600 lumens. I have seen others that have, say, 5,000 or so. Um, if you have a relatively decent space where you can manipulate your lighting, here in my facility, I only have fluorescent lighting. They're all on one switch. So it's either I turn off most of the lights and basically just have a little camera light that I use, kind of what you saw today, or I have it all the way on and what you see behind me. So it does look a little bit washed out with what you see behind me with all the lights. So typically what I would do in a home setup is I'd have all my lights off for the most part and just buy a pinpoint spotlight, which I normally have used from things like Amazon for 20, 30 bucks, and just put that spotlight right over the golf ball. The more you can have your room dark, the better your environment's gonna look, as you saw on the camera today, of course, I'm sure as well. So overall, really, really impressed with the BenQ LH820ST. Uh, we're gonna do some testing on some other products here coming up really soon, so keep, it, keep an eye out for that. And if you have any questions on anything, reach out to me again, Roland at mygaragegolf.com. Um, any questions on the projector, if you're looking to build your own golf simulator, anything like that, I'd love to be your go-to person. So make sure you reach out to me. Uh, hopefully you like this video. If you have, again, any questions, I'm gonna be your go-to person, reach out directly. 
And uh, we'll be pumping out some new content on some other projectors here from BenQ pretty shortly. So keep an eye out for that. As always, until the next time, keep on golfing. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks again.